what's up everybody I'm Adam you're watching Model Aviator and this week we have a new release announcement from Horizon Hobby the Hobby Zone Apprentice Stole S trainer the Apprentice line from Horizon has been the benchmark for traditional trainers for almost two decades now the little Sport Cub S has made equally as large an impact on ultra micro trainers Horizon took the best of both those worlds combined them then made some great improvements and that's how this came to be We'll give you all the details right after we show you how easy it is to get this thing together. Being an Ultra Micro and coming in at under the legal limit of 250 grams, the Apprentice Stole S is a complete ready to fly package in one box. Now there is a little bit of assembly required unlike some Ultra Micros, however, Horizon promises this only takes minutes. And they're right. The box comes neatly packed with everything a new person needs to become a successful model aviator. You'll squeeze your gear together and slide them in the slot provided on the bottom of the fuse. Then you'll plug the aileron servos from your wing into the plugs coming out of the fuse. You'll carefully feed that wire into the hole in the fuse so that it doesn't get pinched when you put your wing on. Put the tabs in the front in their respective places. Bring the back of the wing down and secure it with two wing bolts. And that's it. Literally took me about seven minutes. And if you don't know what you're doing and you've never done this before, it might take you 10 or 11. Not a big deal at all. Now, a quick tip for those folks that may start with this and have never assembled an RC plane before. When it comes to tightening these wing bolts down, this is foam after all, and you can over tighten them even though there's a plastic reinforcement right here. So what you do is, Take a look at your apprentice from this angle, and you're going to see something like this. Notice how the bottom of the wing is not completely flush with the top of the fuse. You want to tighten it down so that it makes solid contact like this, and then stop. That's tight enough. No need to tighten them anymore, or you could over-tighten them and then crush the foam around this little plastic reinforcement piece. And another quick tip, you want to end up with your wing bolts, the heads of them, parallel to the fuselage so that it's more aerodynamic. I don't know if that'd make a difference at this size airplane, but it does look cooler. The Apprentice Stoll has a wingspan of 27.6 inches, a length of 19.29 inches. Our example weighs 5.4 ounces ready to fly with the recommended battery. It has a Spectrum 6-channel as and safe dual protocol UMX receiver, an Avian 6-amp smart light ESC, an 1810 2000 kV 12 pole brushless motor. The prop is a 6x3.5 and it has four high torque linear servos. It's recommended for two cell 280 to 300 milliamp battery packs with the PH 3 pin connector. The Apprentice Stole is the first Ultra Micro Horizons offered made of EPO foam versus EPS. Now to be fair, that adds a tiny bit of weight, but it adds a lot of strength over older EPS trainers. And if you do manage to break something, it's going to be supported with parts in the same way that the iconic trainers that have sold for years at Horizon Hobby have been. Now, to carry the extra weight, it does have a new 2S brushless motor system. This is intended, there's a theory behind that, to provide a good bit more power and capability than the old Sport Cub S, but at the same time not be overkill for a brand new pilot, which is why it's not a three cell system. The Apprentice Stole is equipped with conventional tail dragger gear and large bush tires. They do this for two reasons. The idea is to give you the capability of taking off of surfaces that a lot of ultra micros with tiny tires simply can't take off from, and also to enable you to learn to handle a tail dragger. Now, when you're brand new, you can just punch and go, but as you progress, mastering a tail dragger and nice, slow scale takeoffs is something you're going to want to do as a newcomer because a lot of the cool stuff out there like warbirds and aerobatic airplanes are mostly tail draggers. It also has a lot of aerobatic capability. You've got enough power with the two cell brushless motor to do things like loops, rolls, hammerhead stalls, inverted flight. So you can feasibly take this airplane from not knowing anything, learn to fly, learn some basic aerobatics and become a pretty capable intermediate pilot in one package. Included in the package, you of course get the Apprentice Stole, you get a USB-C 2-cell LiPo charger, you get one 
Spectrum 300 milliamp 2 cell 30C LiPo. These are fairly inexpensive to get a lot more than one. And you get the Spectrum SLT6 LP transmitter. So we're going to talk a little bit more about the new Spectrum SLT6 LP transmitter that comes with the Apprentice Stoll. Now for those of you that have never flown before, maybe you're considering this airplane as your first, it is important that you understand that the Apprentice Stoll, one of the things that makes it such a great first RC airplane, is that it comes with AS3X and Safe Select. AS3X is a gyro, basically an accelerometer system that gauges when the airframe is upset by something other than inputs from the pilot. So in other words, if a gust of wind moves the airplane, AS3X will correct it and ride it for you so that light winds up to five miles an hour don't really affect your airplane. When you're new, you really don't want to be flying in wind much higher than that with a plane this size anyway. Safe is sensor assisted flight envelope and what that means is this switch right here has a beginner intermediate and experienced mode now what that is when you have it in the beginner mode your pitch and bank angle is limited so you can put in controls that without safe would make the airplane spin right into the ground and it won't do that it will simply do a right or left hand turn without losing much altitude when you let go of the gimbals, the sticks on the transmitter, the airplane will right itself. You flip it into the center position, which is the intermediate mode. Now you have a bit more pitch and bank, but you can't completely get the airplane upset. However, when you let go of your gimbals, it doesn't automatically right itself. But you have a panic button. You hit that panic button in the intermediate mode, and whatever position you're in, the airplane will automatically ride itself. That's a big help when you're new. And finally, when you flip it in the third and final position, that's experience mode. That's what I'd fly the airplane in. That enables you to do anything you want to do. You can do loops, you can do rolls, you can fly it inverted. You can get the airplane completely upset, essentially. And again, with that panic button, if you get in trouble, you press that, and from any position that the airframe is in, SAFE will ride it for you. So, some very useful things for a newcomer. It has a couple of other things that are very useful for anybody, but especially a beginner. It has a dual rate switch, a low and a high rate. What that does is determines how much throw the control surfaces have. So they'll have less in low rate, more in the high rate. What that translates to is in the low rate, the controls will be less sensitive, but you'll have less capability. In the high rate, the upside is you have more capability, but the controls will be a bit more sensitive. The other thing is this little twitch. That is the throttle cut switch. When you flip that on, you can accidentally hit the throttle gimbal and the motor will not activate. It becomes live when you turn the throttle cut off. A good practice for anyone new or anybody really, period, is have the throttle cut active the entire time you have the battery plugged up and you're handling the airplane until you have it sitting on the runway and you're ready to throttle up and take off, then you flip it off and go. That way you don't have an accident handling your airplane. Some of you experienced modelers are going to recognize SLT. That is very similar to the tactic protocol that some of you are familiar with. However, Spectrum SLT technology is not compatible to tactic receivers from back in the day. And also, the dual protocol receiver in the Apprentice Stoll is only compatible to two protocols. This specific Spectrum SLT protocol and DSMX Spectrum protocol. So you'll be able to bind any DSMX Spectrum transmitter that you have to the Apprentice Stoll, this one, or the Bind to Fly version, obviously. And you'll be able to take full advantage of any capability that those transmitters have, including smart telemetry capability if your DSMX Spectrum transmitter has that. You will get telemetry feedback from the Apprentice Stoll to transmitters like that in the form of ESC and voltage information. Now, when it comes to the SLT Spectrum protocol, in the future, there are plans to have other ultra micros that have the dual protocol. So you can use your spectrum transmitters that are DSMX, or you'll be able to use this particular transmitter with those airplanes. So there will be a time where somebody that starts with the Apprentice Stall will be able to progress to other ultra micro airplanes that are more advanced 
with this specific transmitter. And the reason they're sticking to the ultra micros with the SLT-LP protocol is because of what the LP stands for, and that is low power. Now that's not a bad thing. It isn't a full range transmitter like a lot of your DSMX transmitters where depending upon the receiver that you're using you can get up to 5,000 feet. This is good out to about a thousand feet which is more than you're ever going to need for an ultra micro sized airplane. You get this thing a thousand feet away from you that's <laughs> probably means that you've lost orientation and it's gone anyway so plenty of range for airplanes this size. And finally, the last really cool feature of this SLT transmitter is the USB-C port on the back. That means that that transmitter is compatible with all of the current versions of the Real Flight RC flight simulator that are selling today. And that's very cool because Real Flight has a trainer edition that is right at the alley of the people that would buy an airplane like this. This trainer edition has all of the training aircraft from Horizon Hobby. There's a free download for this one that will be available. And it has basically training instruction and challenges to help you learn to fly RC, which is kind of a big deal. And the final feature of the ready to fly version of the Apprentice Stole is that it comes with instructions and a free redemption code for a free trial version of that trainer edition. What that free version gets you is a hundred minutes of free flight time. That's more than three hours of instruction that you'll get, which will really set you up for success with your apprentice stole. That's a pretty cool feature and a nice addition to the overall package. Now, if you decide that you want to download or pay for a more advanced version of real flight so that you get all of the flying fields, all of the airplanes as you progress, you can certainly do that. And when you do that, You'll already have a transmitter that you can use with those more advanced versions that will keep you from having to buy a dongle so that you can use a more advanced DSMX spectrum transmitter and it will keep you from having to buy the Interlink transmitter which is pretty expensive in and of itself. So this entire package will save a new RC pilot quite a bit of money and help you quite a bit on your quest to become a really good model aviator. Now it's time for the fun part, time to get to the flying. We're not going to have our standard setup page right before the flying like we normally do because this airplane is pretty much set up right out of the box. It's pre-bound to the transmitter it comes with. Throw is going to be the same for everybody. There's no expo to worry about. The only thing really to get the airplane ready for the first flight is to make sure that the control surfaces are centered and the manual covers that very well for the new folks that don't already know how to do that. So enjoy this flight demo and then we'll see you back here and give you our final thoughts. This is beginner mode so you'll see that the pitch and bank angle are limited but you still have enough maneuverability even in this limited mode to fly it in a small area doesn't take forever to get the thing turned around, which is nice. This is full up elevator, and as you can see, that's as nose high as it will allow you to get in the beginner mode. And now I'm at full up elevator, full left aileron, and full left rudder, and it just does a little spiral down to get out of it. I simply let go of the controls, and it self levels in the beginner mode. So now we've switched it into the intermediate mode. And you'll notice we have a bit more liberty with the pitch and the bank.
you can turn it a good bit tighter in this mode than you can the beginner mode. As you can see in the intermediate mode, you can get the airframe a good bit more upset, but it won't let you get it all the way on its back. When you let go of the sticks, it doesn't self-level, but if you hit the panic button, it will. And now we're switching it into the experience mode and we'll show you what this thing will do. Right off the bat we're going to do a knife edge as well as several other sport aerobatics. That was a roll followed by a loop, and now we're going to transition to inverted flight. The Apprentice Stole S flies inverted well. It takes a little bit more power, about 60% throttle and up, and you're good to go inverted. And here's a hammerhead for you. And now I'm going to try something with this that I love to do with any bush plane, and that's a one-wheeler. The gear on the Apprentice Stole is pretty springy, so you got to have a nice touch to get it to do this, but it will do it. Here we're just showing you the panic button in action. Hit it there and it just finds the quickest path to right side up and level. And here I'm putting in the steep spiral and right to level as soon as you hit the button. Do it again and again right to level when you hit the button. Works well. Here we're just having some fun with it at a local high school lot. You'll see it handles the grass just fine and the tight space is no problem.
This is a small park area close to our house. Has no problem in pretty much any kind of space once you get good with it. Obviously, if you're new, you're going to want to start with a bit of a bigger area, but once you get experienced, it's not going to take much room for you to be able to have fun with it. From the moment I saw this plane and saw those bush wheels, I knew we'd be giving this a try. Considering the size and the springy, forgiving gear that's meant for beginners, it handles this gravel road really well. So I think it's pretty easy to see that the Apprentice Stole delivers on the flight performance promised. All the modes work exactly as they should and really set a new would-be RC pilot up for great success, I think, as well as some of the other features. But I have to say, when it comes to those modes, I applaud the manual. The manual could be another feature in and of itself, really, that is so well written. I read every word, looked at every picture, and I have to say it is written for someone that doesn't know anything about this in such a way that it's very easy to have success, very easy to get the airplane together, very easy to make sure it's ready to fly properly, and they go through an extensive amount of instruction in the manual. Obviously, you can get the instruction with the simulator, which is even better, but the manual does cover a lot of things, and one thing I keyed on in the past Safe has been something that a lot of new pilots misused and they end up staying in safe for too long and not progressing their skill set at the rate that they could. The manual urges new pilots to go through those modes and progress as a pilot and talks about the advantages of each mode. So it's nice to see Horizon really promoting safe what is in my mind correctly. Clearly this is a beginner's airplane. Obviously, an experienced pilot can fly it and have fun with it. And when it comes to value, I think a lot of people that are in the know, not your newer pilot, they're going to take a look at the price point of this and go, man, that's a little bit high for a ready-to-fly ultra-micro trainer. But when you take a look at the improvements that have been made, and when you take a look at all of the other aspects of the price point, and expense of a new person getting into this. The more you think about that, the more that it becomes a really great value. Obviously, you get the trial version of the Real Flight Trainer Edition. That is significant. You get a transmitter that you can use with all versions of Real Flight. That is significant. But the size of this, the fact that it is remote ID exempt, 
because it's below 250 grams really saves a lot of money. When you take a look at some of the larger trainers, like the 1.1 Aero Scout, that airplane, because of its size under new regulations, can't be sold as a ready-to-fly the way this is, with everything included. So while the airplane and transmitter is within $20 of what this whole package costs, you still have to buy a battery and charger. That's another 50. Then every extra battery that you add is about 20 to $25 more than an extra battery for this. So you can run into a lot more expense with a larger airplane at that point. Also, with a larger airplane like that, to be legal, frankly, you're going to have to use your remote ID module if you're flying at a park or soccer field, and you're going to have an airplane that's a little bit harder for a new person to manage in a small space, and you're going to have to join a FRIA if you don't want to deal with the remote ID module. Regardless of whether you pay for a membership at a club or you're buying a remote ID module, that is more expense that you don't have to spend with this. You simply buy this package, go to a large park or a soccer field, and you learn how to fly RC. And for somebody that is trying to get their feet wet and decide, is this something that I want to do? It is probably the best money value out there. It is a true, tough, hobby-grade, good-flying trainer that really sets you up for success. And there's a tremendous amount of value in that price when you think about it. Now, that's not to say that larger airplanes and remote ID modules and joining a FRIA, a club, is a bad idea. That's a great idea, but that's an expense that you're going to want to put into the hobby once you decide that you are all in. And it's well worth it then. If you're wanting to just try this out, this is probably the best option that's ever been made, in my opinion. And also, when it comes to experienced pilots, obviously, this is an airplane that you can do a good bit with if you want to, but you can also pay the hobby forward with this. My intention with this, because it is small, I can put this in my loadout regardless of where I'm going. If I'm using remote ID with my other airplanes in a park, if I'm at one of the three FRIAs that I'm a member of, I'll have this with me, and anybody that comes by that shows the least little bit of interest, I'm going to give them a couple of minutes of instruction, and I'm going to put this in their hands, and for very little expense, have something that I can pay this hobby forward with, and if they mess it up, that's okay. It's not that expensive for me to fix it and keep it going so that I can share this hobby with a lot more people. So, if you decide that you would like to start a hangar, with this airplane or add this to your hangar if you are an experienced person. We'll put a link in the description where you can do just that when you go through that link. It supports our efforts here at Model Aviator and Heidi and I appreciate that. Thank you very much. That is it. Happy flying. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you next week with something cool with wings. And if you are new and you're getting into the hobby and you decide to do it this way, welcome. We're glad to have you.